praise God well it's another day in the kingdom of God we are grateful and thankful for you being a part of the broadcast today want to say happy holiday to all those who are listening and part of the broadcast today uh, grace and peace be unto you and your household uh, we just thank God for who he is what he's doing what he's done what he's going to continue to do by way of his word and by way of his holy spirit uh, just thanking god for this day it's truly it's a day that we've never seen before even though we call this day sunday and we're just grateful for uh, his plan for our life because god does have a plan for our life to the degree that he wants us to be successful and live by his standard or by way of his spirit leading and guiding us um, so i'm just so thankful for um, uh, being a part of the broadcast with you today and God giving us the grace to be able to do that. Uh, also, as uh, just a reminder that this is the last Sunday. This is the last Sunday of this year for this ministry, praise God, in terms of us sharing the word for this year, uh, because this is the last Sunday. Of course, the uh, first Sunday of the uh, new year will be uh, next week, and we're looking forward to that also and just so thankful for what God is doing. So it's amazing uh, that we're going to close out hearing the word of God and then enter into next year, which is next Sunday, hearing the word of God again. Praise God. That's our that's our goal. Amen. Because we know that the Bible said we live by faith and obedience according to God's word. And that's important for you and I to hear, especially in the time that we're living in, because the Bible said the just shall live by faith and not by sight. So praise be to God for that in Jesus name. Also, we want to remind you that um, this is a uh, name of our ministry for those who are listening, maybe for the first time, this Kingdom Faith International Christian Center. And as you can see, we're in the bubble right now, but we're in the bubble of protection right now, even though it's not something that we would want to do, but it's just using wisdom and not being foolish during these times in which we live. So uh, we're just grateful and thankful for all those who are part of the broadcast, uh, the uh, Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, the members, we thank God for you guys. And also we thank God for those who've been following us in ministry. We appreciate that. Those who've been partnering with us, we appreciate that also uh, for you just uh, taking the time and just listening to the word that's designed, amen, to help you in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, our, our theme for our ministry is providing knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. And that's the one thing that we won't get away from because that's what the grace is upon our life to do is to make sure that we get a word out to the body of believers that would help them in their relationship with the Lord. So um, that's what we're designed to do. That's what we've been called to do. And God's been uh, faithful and uh, gracing us to be able to do that. And I'm thankful, again, that we're able to do that even today. It takes a lot of work and a lot of prayer and preparation. And uh, so I'm trying not to uh, let people know that this is not something that we just do haphazardly, but we put a lot of, a lot of prayer and thought into it. And, and asking God to give us wisdom about what to say in concerning his people, because we need a word from God in terms of how we live and even learn how to live by faith, because that's a challenge within itself, too. So, again, at our Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, that's who we are. Uh, on, be on behalf of my wife, Teresa Harrison, she's pastoring with me, and I thank God for her and her, her, her uh, commitment to the ministry, and also all of you. Amen. So we just want to be mindful of that and say thank you for this year because uh, we're closing out. As I said, this is the last Sunday of this year. And praise be to God, we're finishing strong despite what all is happening uh, all around us. Praise God. So don't forget also to take the time to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the uh, word of faith for today. We want you to take the time to do that also. And also, we do need your uh, financial support and help for the ministry. Uh, that's very important. So uh, you can see uh, maybe if you don't know it, but you can just go to our website, that's www.kficc.com, and that's uh, and basically just look for the donate button, and then it will kind of actually uh, uh, give you directions about what you need to do in terms of giving that way. So again, we just want to thank God for all of you once again. I hope you got your Bibles. If you don't, you want to get them, amen. Encourage somebody to get on the broadcast and listen to, because they need a word that would build their faith up and put their faith and trust in God. So we're going to get right into the Word of God. So get your Bible, electronic devices, or whatever it is you use. You have your Bible on. Um, and also get some uh, inf uh, a tablet or something that you can write down this information that you can feed off of this week. So let's go before the Lord in prayer even now in Jesus' name. Father, we do want to thank you and give you praise for these kings and priests that are listening today. 
by way of your word and also by way of your spirit, our desires that you continue to do for us that what we cannot do for ourselves. And we're learning to live by faith and you've given us grace to be able to do that because man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And we thank you that your mouth is full of the word when it comes to the Bible, God, the spirit of the Lord, Father. We just give you praise and glory and honor. We yield ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Take this vessel, Clay. Use it for the glory of God to help, amen, promote the kingdom of God in your people and learning how to walk by faith and not by sight. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody should say amen. Praise God. Well, we've been talking about the, the believer's covenant. I'm going to kind of pick up on that a little bit more. And um, so we talked about this kind of last week, the believer's covenant. And as this is an important message, especially towards the end of this year, because it's a reminder that you and I uh, are believers in Jesus Christ as who we put our faith and our trust in is that we're under covenant. The word covenant simply means that there's an agreement that has been made by the Spirit of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, to those who believe in Jesus. We're under that covenant. And that's a rejoicing statement when you understand that that I just spoken, that there are things that God has given us through Jesus Christ that He has qualified for us. He has qualified Himself for us to receive. And I'm, and I'm in the receiving mode, glory to God. And you should be in the receiving mode because there are things that God is doing for you and I that we can't actually understand. Even the Bible tells us that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered your heart the things that God has prepared for them that already what, love him. So the love relationship has to deal with the believer's covenant. The believer's covenant means simply means I've got the believer and then the covenant because we have to believe in the covenant in order for us to receive the promises that are given us within that covenant or agreement that God's given us through Jesus Christ. So last week we talked about how the Bible, it reveals, amen, uh, how there is an unfolding purpose of God uh, in terms of walking with humanity through time. And as you begin to study the Bible, you can understand that there are two covenants in the Bible. One is of law, uh, and the other covenant is of uh, of grace. So here, today, we're going to be talking about, if you go to Genesis for just a review, Genesis chapter number 12, and we're going to go to verses uh, 1 to 3. And I made a statement that I think is very, very important because sometimes when we read the Bible, sometimes people just like to put everything together like you're making gumbo, and, and uh, you just have to understand that some things have to be rightly divided in the time frame in which it was written and also in terms of the dispensation that was, was given during that time. So in Genesis chapter number 12, it talks about Genesis 12 verses 1 through, uh, uh, I think it's Genesis 12, 1 through 3. It talks about Abram. I want to read that for a minute because I made a statement. This is the statement I made last week, and you might want to write this down because this is an important statement when we talk about rightly dividing the word. Um, so then we know that there's two covenants in the Bible. There's what we said, law, and then one is of grace. But before those covenants were activated, God gave what we call a word of faith or a word of promise to a person. In other words, this came before the law, before the law. So the word of promise was given to Abram. And it says here in Genesis chapter number 12, verses 1 through 3, and the Lord said to Abram, he says, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindreds and from thy father's house unto the land where I show you. Well, and then he says, the second verse, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. And then he goes and says, and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Third verse says, I will bless them that bless thee, curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So now we have a word of promise given by the Spirit of God to Abram, to Abram. This word of promise that God's given him has to deal with a relationship that's going to be built on submission and obedience. I think that's important because sometimes we can't offer God anything other than our will submitting to his will. Because some people want to work for the blessing that God wants to give us, but we can't work for it. We have to understand that he has to provide it and then give us instructions by yielding our heart in terms of believing. Because believing is the PowerPoint. 
in terms of what Abraham has to do, has to move. Because Abraham, if he doesn't believe, he can't receive. And that's important because the belief has to be, is tied to something. It's tied to submission. And it's also tied to him yielding in obedience to instructions. And you need to write that down because some people don't understand that God's uh, uh, MO in terms of how he moves in our life that principle is still the same when you trace it into the uh, Old Testament covenant as well as the New Testament. So God requires on our end is to believe because Abraham, he has to believe what God is telling him, even though God hasn't revealed to him where he's going to take him. So again, that's the trust level. The trust is when sometimes we have to trust God, sometimes when we can't trace God. Well, you can't trust God unless God gives you a word of promise to trust in. So he's telling Abraham, listen, I'm going to do something, but you need to understand you have to overcome. And this is something when you're going to move and when Abraham's going to move from this place of being home, a place of uh, security, a place in terms of where he's got things uh, controlled by his own hand. And now he has to get into unfamiliar territory to trust a God who already knows how to bring about those things that he has yet uh, promised him. So it's not for us to understand how God's going to do it. It's for us to believe that he can do it and then move to a place of overcoming. Because Abraham had to break through fear. He had to break through also uh, uh, unbelief. He had to deal with also uh, uh, getting to the place of uh, 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 moving so he his belief will not cripple God in terms of crippling uh, God's ability to work has to deal with unbelief. Unbelief simply means that Abraham could have refused because that's his choice because his faith starts with a choice. He could say, no, I'm not going to go because I don't understand it. I don't see it. It doesn't make any sense. So I can, can stay right in that first verse. And if he stays there, then there, what happens is what happens, he can't uh, God can't move because God needs our obedience and submission to believe in instructions because that shows our love and following his will and not our own will. That's a powerful statement. So God tells him three, the three I wills. He said, I will show you, I will make you. And then he said, I will, I will bless you. Uh, those are all in terms of God's provision, his power to empower and do the things that are necessary when he begins to understand he's got somebody that's willing to do things his way, he can show forth his strength on our behalf. Turn to Genesis chapter number 17 now, and let's look at verses one through number five, 17, one through five, and we're still establishing because Abraham has left now, and it says here that Abraham in the 17th chapter, and it says here, uh, it says now when Abraham was, Abram, his name is still Abram, his, Abram was 90 years old, and 9, 99, and the Lord appeared to Abram. This is Genesis chapter number 17, verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says here that Abram, the, uh, the Lord says to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Then he says, I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. I made a point here because remember, in Genesis chapter number 12, basically he gives him a word of faith, a word of promise. Now it's elevated. Now in Genesis chapter number 17, he says, now I'm going to make a covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, for as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And the fifth verse says, neither shall thy call thy name any more be called Abram, Thou shalt be, this shall be called Abraham, the father of many nations have I made thee. Now he moves, he changes his name. You could say he got born again, he changed his name, praise God, from Abram to what Abraham gave him a new name. And now he tells him, based upon his new name, this, this, we're going to move from the faith promise to now covenant relationship. And I think that's important because sometimes when we are looking at the New Testament or the New covenant that God's given us, we have to move in that kind of mindset because Abraham is moving in dimensions of what we call revelation. Revelation is always progressive, leading us to a higher point of understanding in terms of how we can actually walk with God and God walking with us. I think that's very, very important. Now, the thing is, the point 
of reference that I want to bring out, and I wrote this down, the point of reference that needs to be noted is when the Spirit of God is establishing covenant for us, it is designed to save us and also preserve our lives for his glory to be revealed. And this will allow us to experience uh, God's design for our life. Now, God is using Abraham as being what we call the father of faith. Because what? Abraham is establishing the principle of faith, faith relationship with the Lord. And the faith relationship with the Lord is the prerequisites for us to lead us into now the covenant that God has for us, even through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter number eight, and let's go to verse number six. So we're going to Hebrews now, chapter number eight, because we're going to move now, and we're going to see what's happening, because now God is going to make an agreement with someone else, but it's not it's it's not just a person, but it's, let's see what it says here. In Hebrews chapter number eight, verses six through ten, I think that's where I want. Is that where I want to go? Yeah. Hebrews eight, six through ten. I think that's where we're going to go. All right. And I'm gonna read this out of the Amplified in the Hebrews chapter number eight and verse number six. But it says, But as is now, but as it's now is, he which it says Christ has required a priestly ministry, which is more superior, more excellent than the old covenant. So it talks about now it's moving from the old covenant into the new covenant, because God is saying now that it's a more superior and more excellent uh, than that of the old covenant agreement, it says here, uh, which he is a mediator and also the agent and superior, more excellent because it is intact and rests upon more important uh, subliner, higher and noble promises. This is talking about now God is cutting covenant with the seed of Abraham. That seed means child. The child is Christ. Christ is the, the promised child. Amen. Where through Christ, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So again, when you read scripture, it's saying here that God has just done away with the old covenant, which was of law. It got through, it didn't get there, but it got there through Abraham, through faith, and through now the covenant, which is the law. Now it moves now to the New Testament or the second covenant, which is of grace. And then it says here in the seventh verse, for if that first covenant had been without defect, there would have been no room for any, 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 uh, another one, another one, or attempt to institute another uh, covenant. It says, however, he finds fault with them, showing it was inadequacy when he said, "Behold, the days will come," says the Lord, "I will make a, a, a make and ratify a new covenant." It says here, a new co agreement with the house of Israel and also with the house of Jacob. Now. It talks about the promised seed of Christ in terms of him coming forth. Now, we know the mediator is someone who stands in between uh, 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 parties. So we're going to go over to, I think, of when got 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Let's go over to 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Let's look at that verse there. And I thought that was interesting, just that 1 Timothy 2 and 5. 1 Timothy 2 and 5. And that's where we want to go. And in 1 Timothy chapter number 2. And verse number five, and it says here, First Timothy two and five. Okay, First Timothy two and five. Now, it reads as following. It says here, it says, for there is one God. Okay, remember the Spirit of God speaks to Abram, and then He builds a faith relationship with Abram through the Word of faith, tests Abraham's obedience. He moves out. Now he's 99 years old, and God says, okay, now I'm going to cut a covenant relationship with you now. And because of that, your name is changed from Abram to Abraham. Then we went over to Hebrews where it says that God has done away with the old agreement, given us a new agreement. And that new agreement is found in his son, Jesus Christ, because he says, well, there is one God, one mediator between God and man, and that man is Christ Jesus, and then it says, who gave himself a ransom from all to be uh, testified in due time. So in the in the in the uh, in the fullness of time, when the, when God said it was time to bring forth Christ, He came forth. 
but the purpose of him coming forth was to establish a new covenant. He is the mediator he, the, between us and God that bring us into the uh, covenant relationship that's designed to enhance our life for good and not for evil. I can't say that enough because some people are afraid of the Bible because it is, they, they think it's designed to bring them into a place of condemnation, but no, it's, it really is supposed to bring us to a place of realization to the place that we repent of our, our ways and understand that God is the creator of heaven and earth and he has designed how we should live life. And therefore, uh, because he has the authority to do that, we have to come to terms with, with that and submit to that. And then as we submit to that and find out who our savior is, which is Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. And because of what he has done for us, because the Bible said all the promises in him are yea and amen. So we know the promises are designed to enhance our life so God can bring provision, protection, and also peace. Glory to God. I like this right here because sometimes people are, even now, they're inquiring these uh, things in which we just mentioned. They want provision. They want protection. They want peace. But it can't come through man's means. It has to come through the sovereign God and who created the heaven and earth and who has put a redemptive plan in place uh, through the new covenant that's found in Jesus Christ that now allows him to use that by legally through Christ. He can begin to move on our behalf and to protect us from the evil one and preserve our lives for good and not for evil. You should say amen on that. Glory to God. Now, as we go forth, go to Galatians chapter number three, and let's go to Galatians three and nine as we begin to walk this out some more, because this is a good word, I think, as I've been saying, and it's a word that's designed to help us in our walk and our relationship with the Lord. So when we go to Galatians and we go over to verse number three, we'll go to Galatians three, and then we're going to go to verse number nine, Galatians three and nine, glory to God. Galatians 3 and verse number 9. In Galatians 3 and 9, it says, So then they which are of faith. Remember I told you that God gives Abraham what? A word of faith. That's why he's called the father of faith. And because of that faith that he has lead him, led him into now this revelation of having a covenant relationship with God. And now even with us, as we put our faith in, have that same faith that Abraham had, but put it in what God has spoken and said, and God has sent his son, Jesus, glory to God. And as we put our faith in Jesus, now we come under the covenant relationship. And because of Abraham, it says, so then when, which he of faith were blessed of faith, uh, so then they which be of Abraham, be of faith, those that be of faith, that's what I want those that be of faith, you need to let yourself know, I'm of faith. I'm of faith. Amen. What do you mean? I'm of faith in Jesus Christ, who is the new covenant that puts us in relationship to receive the blessings of God for our lives, not only now, but also when we leave the earth. The blessings are designed, as I said before, it is designed to save us and to preserve us. So during this time of pandemic, amen, we, we could have lost our minds if we didn't have faith in Christ and in his word. We, we would have been left to our own uh, means of understanding and trying to figure out how things are going to come together when the Bible tells us that it's already been done through Christ because we're in Christ and we're part of the kingdom of God. And because we're part of the kingdom, we're in the covenant relationship through that kingdom. And that kingdom is designed to provide the things that we need in this life as well as the next. So it's important for us to have that understanding because faith is not just blind faith. Faith is having intellectual knowledge of God's word. So Abraham being the father of faith, he didn't just leave just to be leaving because he felt led to leave. He led because he was told to leave because information is what faith is. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he heard what the spirit of God said and he moved. Glory to God. Amen. So that's powerful because that's the principle is still the same is that we as believers, we have to have faith in Jesus. But understanding that degree of faith in Jesus moves us to the new covenant because we're under the covenant contract 
of Jesus because he is the mediator between us and God. He brought peace. We didn't bring peace. He, his peace now is upon us. And because of that, now we receive prosperity because what he has willed it to be so. Because why? He is the uh, 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 the ransom for, for the things that we couldn't get done. He is our substitute. He is the one that now we've moved through and understanding that through him alone that we're able, amen, to move and do what he's called us to do. Let's look at the next verse, amen, in the 10th verse. It says here, it says, uh, no, let me read that in the Amplified. That same verse, this is Galatians 3 and 9. It says, so then those who those who are people of faith, those who are people of faith. See, one thing I could say, if I can't say anything else, it's like a song we used to say, I've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word, and he has never failed me yet. And that's a powerful song, song because our faith in what the word of God says about our Savior, which is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, everything is wrapped and tied inside of him because he is our mediator. We go through him. Jesus said, I'm the door. If any man enter in, he is saved and go in and out and find pastures. It's through the name of Jesus we have the authority to bind and to loose. It's through the name of Jesus, glory to God, that we have access to come before God and come before the throne of God. And I ask anything in prayer in his name, and the Bible says that God will answer the prayer. This is, this is, a, there is no other name given unto heaven whereby men must be saved, but by the name of Jesus. It's the name that's above every name, glory to God. And that name is to cause us to be a people of faith that we're tied to that name. We're tied to his character. We're tied to his authority. We're tied to his power. We're tied to his wisdom. We're tied to everything we need is wrapped up and tied up in having a, what we being people of faith. <laughs> and faith is not blind. Faith has information pertaining to the contract of the new covenant that's found in the New Testament truths that are found in the Bible. Somebody say amen up in here today. Glory to God. So what is he saying? He said, Though then, so then those who are people of faith, this is the Amplified, those who are people of faith are blessed. And remember I said this right last week, blessing is not pertaining by uh, uh, outside stimuli. In other words, when you get a check, you say, I'm blessed. Uh, people say, well, I don't get no check or I ain't blessed. No, this blessed is because of relationship. When you understand your relationship doesn't move like the weather, it's not seasonal, it's not hot, it's not cold. It, God will be with us. With, I mean, my God, he's with us whether it's hot, whether it's cold. Amen. He's not a seasonal God. He is a permanent God through his word that will abide in those who believe. And because we believe, the Bible says we shall receive. So though then, so, so then those who are people, which are people of faith, are blessed. I'm blessed because of my position in Christ. He has forgiven me of all my sins. Glory to God. And I believe that. Now I forgive myself. Glory to God. Knowing that he gave me place. If I mess up, I can ask for forgiveness. I can repent. Stop what I'm doing. Turn around. Do something different. Glory to God. And start over. My God. What, what kind of God we serve is awesome. He's an awesome God. To those who are of people of faith. Amen. People of faith. We're people of faith. That's why we didn't lose our mind through this pandemic, because we're people of faith. Glory to God. Yes, it's hard times, but we're people of faith. And because we're people of faith, we're, we are blessed and made happy. Glory to God. My God, I talked about that last week, how God has made me and my wife happy. Glory to God. We're happy because God has moved on our behalf and done things for us that we thought we couldn't do or didn't have the ability to do, but with God, all things are possible to them that believe. You have to keep your belief level up in the word of faith, in your relationship in God, and understanding that God is not concerned about how you feel. He's concerned about how your, how, where your faith is in terms of where you need to be in him. Then it goes on to say, made happy and favored by God. 
When God favors you, that means he opens doors for you. That means he allows you to move when others stand still. When God favors you, that means others can go hungry, but God sees that you get fed. When God favors you, you can be sick and then made, made whole or healed. Glory to God. When God favors you, you go to the front of the line. You don't go to the back of the line. When God favors you, and the favor of God is on the people of faith. Glory to God. In Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant. Woo, my God, glory to God. You need to say amen right now. And for that reason alone, we are blessed and highly favored. Even when things look wrong and th things don't look according to what you think. I ain't talking about what you think. I'm talking about what he said. Because what he said is what he will. And what he will is what going to work for you. The will of God is always working for you. Even if you can't see it. Even you can't feel it. The will of God is already working for you. And it's by faith and obedience in this word. So it says we're made happy and favored by God as partners in fellowship. Partners in fellowship. Amen. With believing and trusting Abraham. Partners in relationship goes back to what I told you before. In other words, our proof of love for God is in our submission and obedience to God. I can't say that enough because God doesn't require lip service. You can say all day long you love somebody, but your actions can say contrary that you don't love them. And listen, it's time for us, amen, to really be sincere about our relationship with God because what God is looking for us to understand what the principles are. In other words, what is the prerequisites on your end that God is looking for that you must acquire and do? And what he's asking us to do is not hard. What he's asking us to do is to submit. To, to submit is to yield and give way to, amen. And to give way to is simply, you know what? One of the greatest things I could say is like, God, I can't do it. I need your help. Glory to God. Amen. That's not being weak. Amen. That's being this biblically sound and turning understanding. There's some things you can't do, but God can do it if you give him the right of passage way to do it. And the right of passage way is when you understand, first of all, you understand that you're limited to him. He has no limits around him, none whatsoever. And when God moves, he can move through people. He can move, amen, and touch somebody's heart on your behalf. He can do so many things beyond our understanding if we learn how to put our trust in God and learn how to understand that we're believers, we're people of faith in Jesus Christ, who is the mediator of the new covenant that puts us in the blessings of what to receive Abraham's blessing because Abraham submitted to what? He submitted to God. He yielded in obedience. He didn't get everything right all the time, which that's just good also because sometimes we miss the mark. But that doesn't mean we miss God because God is still waiting for us to mature and make the right decision and get back in alignment so we can see him move on our behalf. There's no time. Amen. We can't be crippling our, our ability or cripple God from moving in our life because of what? Unbelief. Now, go to Hebrews. I'm almost done here. But go to Hebrews chapter number. I know we've been in Hebrews a lot. But go to Hebrews now chapter number six. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number six. This is a good word today. I hope you're hearing this. And this is a powerful word for us going into, amen, this next year, 2021, amen, that is, that, you know what, people want to come up with all kind of uh, uh, themes and, and things to say. But one thing I can say, like I said before, we've come this far by faith. Faith is, this, is the bottom, uh, it's going to be the entry uh, as well as us, the, the exit. We're going to need faith at the beginning and in our walk and our walk and our relationship with God. At the end of our age, and when we say, God, says our time here is up on the earth, we're going to need faith then. So faith is the primary thing that we need to hold on to, which is our choice. Remember, our faith starts with a choice. Our choice, amen, moves to now to understanding that we have what confidence, what? in something other than ourselves, which is the Bible. Then we move from there, having confidence in the Bible, that we find out what the Bible has to say about us. Now we follow instructions, that's obedience. And then we move to that point that we understand that we're in the, in the kingdom of God. And because of the Bible, it's the spirit of God. But then also the words that we speak, amen, can either cause condemnation or either cause victory in our lives. Because we what? We understand that the words that we speak they are spirit in their life also. So when we get to Hebrews chapter number uh, six, I said, I haven't lost that place. In Hebrews chapter number six and verse number nine, it says, but beloved, we are persuaded of things of the things of you. Now, Paul is talking to this group here. What we believe is Paul. Some people don't believe that 
um, they think it's Aquila or Priscilla that made, uh, that wrote Hebrews, but uh, write, the writer is unknown, but some people believe that it's Paul. But in other words, that's here nor there. Let's go to, again, Hebrews 6 and verse number 9. It says, but beloved, we are persuaded better for better things of you, things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. So now he's talking about, in other words, when we receive, amen, our come under the new covenant uh, through Jesus Christ, what happens is we have now entered into this place called salvation. Salvation means deliverance, soundness of mind, healing, a uh, peace, prosperity, all that comes along with it. That package is there. And then as we walk through life, because God knows we're in this, we're in the world, but we're not of the world, we encounter things because of this fallen system that he needs to protect us. So those things kick in because of the salvation that comes through our relationship through Jesus Christ. The next verse says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, and in that you minister to the saints and do minister. So I'm talking about ministry, and it's not talking about just the ministers that stand behind the pulpit, but it's talking about us in terms of ministering those who serve Jesus Christ. We serve him out of our life. We serve him in terms of obedience and through the code of ethics that's found through the scripture, uh, like the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, or even in terms of the word of faith, the just should walk by faith and not by sight. And it tells us that some things that we do in terms of our conduct, attitude, behavior, the renewing of the mind, uh, understanding that we now have access to receiving revelation and understanding and wisdom from God. And when we encounter things in life, all these things accompany salvation. And because we're ministering to God and we're serving God day by day and always acknowledging him and not losing sight of who he is and developing what we call God consciousness and not self-conscious. So that's important. So then he goes on and says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence and to full assurance to hope to the end. In other words, what he's saying, your relationships start on faith, love, and hope. So in other words, you have to still remain hopeful. And that's in going into 2021, we have to still remain hopeful. Amen. Hopeful. When well, you know what hope is, hope is expectation for favorable change. That thing that simply means this faith statement I'm getting ready to say for you right now. It means it for me. The things are changing for me right now, not for good, not, not for bad, but for good. Things are changing right now for me right now for good. Amen. And sometimes we have to understand that then when you're people of faith, love and hope, hope is expectation for favorable change. In other words, this bubble that we're in going to bust. Glory to God. It ain't bust yet, but it will. Glory to God. Because why? It can't stay. Because what? God has blessed us, amen, and said that even though we have to endure some things, we endure with patience without complaining, and then we have hope to believe that it's going to change in our favor and turn around for our good. Does that make any sense? I hope it is to somebody. Then it goes on and says that you be not slowful, but followers of them through faith and patience. If anything has been tried during this time, even now, it's been your faith and your patience. Your faith and your patience. Your faith and your patience. Because when you have faith, that means you're believing and things haven't changed, but you still believe. And you have to get up and hold to your faith and believe. You know, you have to believe beyond what you see, beyond what you think, beyond what you feel, beyond what people say. You still have to believe. Because that's your choice. And your and that choice is something that you have to understand that once you believe, now you have to have patience to inherit the promises of God. In other words, to inherit the promises of God. You remember about Abraham, he you know he leaves. I forget, I think he was 70 when he left. Now 20 years, 29 years later, God comes to him again. So in other words, he had to endure some time where it didn't look like it was favorable, where it looked like things weren't moving on his behalf. He had to go through some trials and some tribulation. But at the end, God spoke. Glory to God. I'm here to tell you, God, get ready to speak to somebody in 2020. Glory to God to let them know that that thing that you've seen, that enemy that you know now, you won't see no more. Because there comes a time that when God says enough is enough and things are going to move in the direction that's going to make you happy, that's going to make you joyful, that makes you know that God had not forgotten you, that he still had a plan for you and your family, amen, plan for you to be what's successful, because that is what he, Jesus, paid for. He said, I come that we may, he may, we may have life, 
and have it more abundant. I hope you're getting something out of this today because, you know, I'm stirred up because we're people of faith. Glory to God. We are people of how we feel. Feelings are like a roller coaster. It will lead you up and it will bring you down. Glory, but faith will keep you steady, understanding that the word of God don't change. It is the same today, yesterday, and today, and forevermore. So that, that you be not slowful, but follow them through faith and patience, and in, in, inherit the promises of God. Then it goes on to say, for God, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no other, he swear by himself. In other words, when God makes a promise, he, he ain't like man. He ain't going to lie. He ain't going to. Listen, if God made a promise, it's got to come to pass. I don't care. Hell or high water. Eventually, God's word will come to pass. Then it says, saying, surely I will bless thee and multiply. I will bless thee. Then it says, so after you have patiently endured. Listen, we have endured some things in 2020. My God, we have endured. My God, some of you have endured some things. I don't, I can't even find the words to say. But listen, the enduring brings what calls us to a place to obtain the promise. You're going to come out better than you were than you went in the bubble. When you come out, you're going to be better. Glory to God, because God's hand is upon it. And then it goes on and says, and so after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise for, for men. It's just for men. Verily swear by greater and oath by confirmation is to them that an end of all strife were in God willing and more abundant to show unto the heirs of promises immutable of his and the immutability of his counsel and confirmed it by the by an oath. When the Spirit of God says, I will, I will this for you, Ron, I will this for you, believer. I will this for you. If God wills it for you, even though it hasn't manifested because we're people of faith, you say, I receive that you have willed that for me, being unto me according to your word. And I, the words that Mary said when the angel came and brought a message to her and told her she was going to have a son and she wasn't even married yet. She didn't even have sexual relationship with a man yet. But because God has willed the thing to be so glory to God, it is so. You need to touch somebody and say, it is so. 2021 is going to be, it is so. He's going to turn some things around for you, your will because he chooses to do so i'm almost done i want to read a couple more verses that by two immutable things which it is impossible for god to lie we might have a strong constellation my god i like that word right a strong constant a strong confidence that what he did for those who are of old who had faith and believe and trusted god and endured and had patience and didn't complain and if they did complain they repent ask god to forgive me give me the grace to hold on give me the grace to believe that things are going to turn on turn around and turn together turn around what for my good even though it's not good now i have hope to believe it's going to happen because your word says you cannot lie then the son who fled from the refuse to lay hold of on the hope that was set before us, which hope we have an anchor for our soul. We need to be anchored in hope, anchored as people of faith in God's word to the promise that he's given us through Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And manifestation is getting ready to override somebody in 2021. And even that, he's going to bless us so that we know that his hand has been appointed and he's preserved our life for good and not for evil. I need to stop. I need to read the rest of this, but I need this. For we have hope and an anchor of our soul, but sure and steadfast, and which which enter into the veil, within the veil, it says, whether the forerunner is uh, for us entered, even Jesus was made the high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. What is Jesus? He's still, this. Jesus is in heaven right now praying for us. Glory to God. He's praying for the church, praying that we come to a place of maturity, praying that we learn how to talk like he talks, to praying that we come to the understanding that we're in kingdom covenant relationship with him and that by his stripes we're already healed, that the weak say that they're strong, that the poor say that they're rich, glory God, say what he says, even though it this visibly it hasn't manifested, it shall, glory God, because God is moving on our behalf. I am Ronald G. Harrison Sr., and I approve this message today in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Throw your hands up and give God some praise and thank him that we have ended out another Sunday, amen, which is the last Sunday of December of this 2020. Praise God. Lord, we want to thank you, give you praise for those who are listening today. This word 
is designed to stir up people, get their faith on fire, get their hope, amen, resurrected, amen, get their unbelief off of them till they get to the place where they do believe. And we believe and we trust that this word will set a fire inside of us to understand that even though while we look not at the things that are seen, the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal, God. We believe the prophetic word that you spoke over our lives, that you said through faith and also obedience and submission to your word. You said eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered our heart. The things that God has prepared for them that love him. And we thank you that there is a set time of manifestation that will come upon those who are trusting and believing and praying and looking for you to do something that only you could do for them. And time has a way of weighing on us. But Lord, give us the faith and the strength and the endurance to hold on, to believe and trust that things are turning in our favor, God. So, Lord, I thank you for blessing these people with wholeness and peace and benefit. Help them to understand that their believers, uh, the believers covenant is working and operational to those, amen, who are of faith. Glory to God. So, Lord, we thank you and give you praise for our time together today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you in the new year. Glory to God. Some of y'all I'll see you before then. Glory to God. God bless you.